Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. This is Ali Sarnishi at Ali Dose of Inspiration. And as promised, every day, daily 20 minutes to get to know the speaker and get a sneak peek of their speech. And today I have my friend Mario Leduc and also here in Canada, Moncton. And I have Anza Goodbar in USA. And you are in Denver, Anza, or in? I'm in Denver, yes. Denver. Excellent. So welcome today and uh, please uh, introduce yourself and just uh, give us a little bit about uh, your speech, a sneak peek, not the whole speech, <laughs> and just uh, introduce yourself. And uh, please go right ahead. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. <laughs> if you're comfortable, that is. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's jump in. Um, again, my name is Anza Goodbar. I'm in Denver, Colorado, and I am excited to talk about how we can use empathy to create common ground and connection with our fellow humans. And, you know, during this pandemic, a lot of people have been cooped up together, having a difficult time with relationships, being together all the time. And I think there's some really fun ways that we can show more compassion and more empathy and um, maybe minimize some conflict and get along a little bit better. Nice, nice. And uh, tell us, uh, t uh, hi, uh, Salam uh, Tiboub, how are you, buddy? I'm good, I'm good. Blessings to everyone. Blessings, blessings to everyone from Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to have you, my friend. And just uh, tell us a little bit, uh, Anza, like uh, what you do and uh, what's... Uh... Sure. Absolutely. Well, I am a life design strategist. I specifically work with women to help them build a six-figure business based on their passions, their experience, and their skill set. And I specifically have been working with women who have lost their income or given up their income since COVID to have to be at home to help school their kids. Here in the U.S., we only have about 15% of kids that are in school in any capacity right now. And it's hard for moms to make a living around being available at school. And so I have a six-figure life and business blueprint that I help women um, from the very beginning of their idea of how they could build a business all the way through the launch plan to get them making money in um, six to 12 months. Mm. Thank you very much, Anza. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. And uh, before we move to Mario, I will just uh, uh, put a little ad and it will be right back. Excellent. So we are back. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, now we are going from Denver back to Canada to Mario Leduc. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Mario, and a uh, sneak peek of your speech, my friend. Okay, well, hello, bonjour, uh, y buenas tardes uh, a todos. So uh, I'm originally uh, Acadia from uh, Moncton, uh, Nouveau Brunswick, born and raised, uh, immigrated to, uh, to Mexico. I'm back in Moncton at the moment uh, for... Uh, uh, family uh, reasons, and uh, basically uh, what I've done through my entire life is uh, social work, uh, community uh, development, worked uh, with uh, at-risk individuals uh, that have were homeless, uh, worked at uh, Federal Penitentiary as well, uh, and uh, right now I am what I, I chose to uh, be, which is choice coaching with uh, the emotional fitness, as well as uh, William Glasser's uh, uh, work as well with choice theory. So basically, uh, I'm here to talk about rec reclaiming our humanity and that technology is not uh, the, uh, uh, the barrier. It is actually something that can help. And going back to, it's listening to ourselves. It's listening actually to the other person. Uh, uh, even the fact of meeting Anza, uh, and uh, actually, uh, Facebook just recently with uh, Psalm, uh, if I'm pronouncing it properly, hopefully I am. Uh, if not, correct me. 
<laughs> so it's about creating actual relationships, valuing, belonging, mm -hmm. freedom, fun, which is also learning, which are the basic uh, of uh, choice theory. And then the uh, emotional fitness tools, which is different ways of listening. Mm, it's not listening to others. It's actually listening to ourselves. And then we start listening to each other. And then we mm. start communities that are actually worthwhile. Whether we do it on Zoom, on uh, applications like this, it's about taking from the heart. So it's how we can do that with these particular tools. That's what we're talking about. And I'm going to uh, uh, end with uh, Namaste. <laughs> namaste. <laughs> namaste. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mario. That's, uh, that's amazing. It's, it's really, it's true. Uh, listening is something that we are missing out. And we tend to hear, but we don't really listen. Mm -hmm. And listening, the power of listening is a big thing. Because listening to ourselves first, because when we listen to ourselves, we start to understand what's going on inside. And when we listen to others, we actually listen to listen, not listen to, re to, re to respond. And the problem of a lot of people listen so they can reply. We don't really understand in the message. So before I move to my friend uh, uh, Salam, uh, Paslam, uh, Ibobi, I will just uh, share something that uh, uh, Salam do. And he's a, a singer, and he really made this, this, uh, this song that I really like. And I'm going to share it. And uh, before he introduce himself, I hope this is the one because I didn't put the name. So let me see. If not, it's something that. Uh... Yeah, that is the one. Can you guys see it? We can make this world bigger. There is power and ability. can make this world be all we get different colors but in love we see ourselves as one we are strong if we unite dead but we are weak if we divide, where there is unity, there is victory, and the we get power in that unity, we must prosper, we need each other. What a beautiful song, my friend. I really love wow. it. It's about humanity. It's about coming. Oh, I apologize. Let me just move that here. And I'll be right back. There we go. Excellent. Amazing song, my friend. It's really, it's really about humanity. It's really about bringing us together, and it's about really one love and one world. unity and coming together. One world, yeah. one love. Uh, with this, after this song, my friend, uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, sneak peek of your of your speech. Wow, wow, I'm so excited. Thank you, my, my brother, Mr. Ali. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Sam Ebube. Uh, I'm a multiple award winning artist from Lagos, Nigeria. 
Uh, the song you just listened to that you just watched just now is titled One Love, One World. This song was recorded in commemoration for World Humanitarian Day in 2017. And in 2020, the song won World Civility Song of the Year and the first African artist to back this award. And uh, to, for the now, what I do, I'm the national statement for youth to I Change Nation in USA. I see to youth matters. And um, I'm the CEO of Youth Published Now and founder of Stay Alive Civility Global Initiative. Um, for now, I'm, a, I'm an author. I have three books. I have, I have a book titled Stay Alive. Stay Alive with the World uh, Suicide Prevention Awareness Initiative that, that was birthed by World Civility Amb Ambassador Sam Obobe. So with this, we do a lot of advocates for humanitarian issues all across the world. And um, to the glory of God, I'm super excited to be part of this. And uh, honestly, to, to my, my uncle from, from Asia, Namaste, because I, I, I was in India in 2009, and I, I get to learn a lot of stuff to Kaseho, you know. <laughs> I was able to learn a lot, a lot from, from India. I love India. And I'm, I'm, so, I'm so honored to, to be here today to speak and, and to, to also share this platform with other world leaders to address some of the global humanitarian issues that are going on across the world as in presently. So I'm, 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 I'm so honored and looking forward to the main subject itself. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much. And the title of your, of your speech is uh, all, uh, one. Yeah, I, I have a book titled Young Global Leaders. It's a, it, okay. it's a book on leadership role. And I have another book on Stay Alive, Rich Mind, Empty Grave. That is the subtitle, A Rich Mind, Empty Grave. Mm -hmm. Now, what brought about this is that I realized that from the uh, WHO, World Health Organization, they said that um, uh, in every 40 seconds, someone somewhere is committing suicide. And we have the global rate around 800,000 by year. So we look at the number of people that is going to the grave every year and every second. So we see that there is seriously a pandemic that is more tragic than COVID-19 itself. Because if you look at the total number of people who are dying, who are, who are dying of COVID, they are, they are less to the number of people that we've lost to suicide. And suicide doesn't come. It has a lot of things that, that is surrounded. We have depression, we have anxiety, we have mental illness. So we are creating an awareness, an advocate for mental alertness, for mental wellness of people, both young and adults. And I'm super excited because together I've been receiving, receiving a, a lot of testimony from people all across the world. Now, one thing I want to say that I want to leave with our viewers, those who are watching right now, that are going to watch the replay, is that when we say a rich mind can see the grave, what does it take to have a rich mind? Now, when you have a mind that is enriched, it has to be synchronized with your mindset. Mm -hmm. Now, there is tough times all across the world right now in Africa, in Asia, Australia, America, Canada, Europe, everyone is going through a pandemic season, which people didn't plan for it. It's a sudden hit, and that is life. Life comes with different seasons. We need to educate our mindset. We need to equip our mindset so that we know that life comes in season. Now, there is an adage in my culture here in Yoruba, in Nigeria that says that live long and you will see enough but when you die early you won't see anything so for you mm. to stay alive be sure that you are going to face season now we have rainy season we have dry season we have winter season we have we have different type of season but the rainy season comes after the rain comes the sunshine so for mm. everyone that is going through 
one challenges of life or the other don't let the challenges of life get inside of you is the amount of water that gets into the canoe that sunk it so now when you, when you when you learn to live a fulfilled a purposeful life by 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 ensuring that life itself is full of up and down and it takes a rich mind to empty the grave stay alive mm. love it love it my friend it's uh, it's really amazing like it's uh, it's all about uh, you. You are totally right. COVID nineteen came and hit everyone. COVID nineteen didn't didn't say this is a rich country. They didn't say this is a poor country. They didn't say this is a president. This didn't say this is a teacher. This is a student. Yeah, right. It everyone. So this is a sign. This is a lesson that we need to learn that we have to come as one together, as humanity, a journey back to our humanity to focus on what is good for the humanity, to focus on what is important, because. Life is too short, and when we support each other, when we see the best in other, they can grow and they can flourish. But when we focus on what is bad, all we can see is the negative. And they see something the other day, and it say kindness is reminding people of what is 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 lending my strength to other instead of pointing to their weakness. And when really focus on that, we keep people really grow and flourish. Mario, I see you want to say something, my friend, about this topic, journey, like uh, something, uh, something. It doesn't have to be about your, your, your speech <laughs> or answer. Or... I'm open to questions, if, uh, if anything, as well. Uh, and the speech will be on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. So the journey, wow. back to, journey back to humanity, it's, it's like a journey. It seems like we are shifting away from it. It yes, seems technology, right. technology, mm -hmm. materialistic, and all that stuff keep us more busy about what is there for us instead of, of what is there for others. Instead of like there is in Africa and in India and in all other places, people they don't even have food to eat. And in, in Western country, I have one car and they want two. I have one house and they want two. I want mm -hmm. so it's just become it's almost like we are feeding. That ego are feeding that thing like it's almost like it become like consuming become almost like a religion. Like I, the more I buy, the more I become like a good person that I am buying. I'm spending, and the, the more I stay away from it, I become it's like not. I'm not really following what's those telemarketing or all those big company want me to buy, and it's unfortunate. And this need to change, and it has to start from home first. Yeah. Yes, for me, I think I want to say something about what you just uh, dropped now, the nugget you just dropped now. Now, there is, there is a word that I call civility for all. Civility for everyone all across the world. Now, this is the best time that we need to tell everyone to be polite with people. A lot of people are going through a series of life challenges, life issues. But do you know that if I treat one, I treat everyone. So if I can be polite with my fellow human, and my fellow human goes about being good to one other person, we all would change the world and make the world a better place for everyone to live. So civility for everyone, civility at the workplace, civility in the family, civility in government, in governance, civility everywhere so I, I i want to treat people the way i want other people to treat me too i want to mm -hmm. be treated the way i want people to treat me so it's about telling people that be kind to people so for everyone that is watching right now i i think i i, I might throw this as well to to some of to some of my world leaders that is with me on the on this platform now that what do you see to civility in asia what do you see to civility in North Africa? Civility for everyone. Mm -hmm. Agree, hundred percent. Civility for everyone, and let's just bring the civility to everyone with this before we finish, and we'll be back to this uh, another song, and we will go from there, my friend.
Yeah, I think technology is good when it's working, but when it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Before we leave, Anza and San, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing the both of you uh, on the 13th uh, mindset, how we think civility of uh, one person being kind, recognizing the value of each individual. Mm -hmm is uh, very much part of recognizing uh, the importance of each individual. And when we're talking about money, there's, we need to, uh, the other need is survival. And uh, Anzat, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to that because it's not about necessarily getting rich, it's about uh, meeting our basic survival needs sometimes. Yes. Many women uh, who are uh, single mothers or even in couples uh, with a wife or husband uh, is in need uh, of uh, maintaining the uh, the family. They're responsible. So I'm looking forward to hearing you as well. It was great meeting the both of you today. And Adi, I mean, uh, I was blessed uh, with having you as a friend uh, for uh, many years and uh, I thank you for it. Thank you very much, Mari. Thank you for being a good friend and thank you for being part of this uh, this journey as well. And uh, I think, as promised, I said 20 minutes. It's 21 minutes now. And uh, a journey back to humanity. This is our last interview before Saturday. So everyone, join us on Saturday at 9 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time. It's going to be powerful with 22 speakers, all from all over the world, sharing one vision, one goal. It's just to go back to our humanity and empower, inspire, motivate people to be back to our humanity. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye.